The maintenance-free motorcycle chain has to be one of the most underrated innovations in the recent years. Let's talk about it. What's up my biker friends? Welcome back to another video. This is the first video of 2022. It's the middle of February and quite a nice day. It's around 8 to 9 degrees sunny. Uh, it's the afternoon. It's actually the first time I'm taking my bike out for a ride. Just a little small test ride. I um, haven't been on the bike since my Balkans tour in uh, October. So actually I got back in November. So it's been sitting there, the bike, since November. I'm back out again. And today we're going to talk about the holy grail of motorcycle chains, which is the Regina High Performance Endurance Chain. Now, for those of you guys that have paid attention to the motorcycle news, the news came out towards the end of 2022 when BMW released a press statement saying that they have a few bikes on the list that you can equip with a maintenance-free chain. So when you buy it brand new, that was an option you can click and you can get, I think, your S1000 double R or something in with a maintenance-free chain. And I was quite curious to see if that was really a BMW development. And as I started digging into it, um, it was obvious that it wasn't BMW developing the chain, it was actually Regina developing the chain. So I had my hopes up that if they could do this for BMW, that they would sell the chain on the market. So they did. In the beginning of uh, 2021, some of those chains were available. They're not available in all sizes, but they are available in the size for the KTM 1290 Super Adventure SNR and other motorcycles that use the uh, was it 525 uh, size of chains. So I was really, really intrigued by the idea because I think it's a very important innovation when it comes to uh, motorcycle primary drives. Most motorcycles for 100 years are still using motorcycle chains and we all know what a pain in the ass it is to maintain these chains. You have to constantly lubricate the chain, you have to adjust uh, the tension of the chain. It's not the end of the world, but it's it's a hassle, especially when you're on tour. So drives like a belt drive or a shaft drive, they are a lot more convenient, especially when you're on tour. It doesn't mean they're completely maintenance-free. You know, the belt drive is, is almost maintenance-free. I had that on my Harley Davidson. But the shaft drive, it still does um, need some maintenance on it. So every, I think, 10,000 kilometers when you bring your bike to the service with BMW, they will sort of refill the oil or at least recommend to do that. So there is maintenance that you still have to do, but it's not the regular maintenance that you have to do on the chain. So I thought it was really, really interesting. Now there are other ways to get around of the regular maintenance issue on the chain and chain oilers are one of those. So I've done a review on the chain oiler that I used on my 1290 Super Adventure S and I had that chain oiler on there for almost 50,000 kilometers. It did a really good job overall. So that's one way of dealing with the regular maintenance if you have a chain oiler. They cost around 300 to 350 euros. There's different makes out there on the market. There's cheaper ones. But in that, in that range with the same functionality, that's kind of what you have to expect to pay for it. And that did a really good trick. But there's a couple of things that bothered me and there were an issue with even a very good chain oiler. And that's why I got interested in the maintenance-free chain. So the two things that are an issue with even a good chain oiler is that you have to make sure that the chain is relatively clean in order for that chain oiler to work. Um, that goes for any kind of lubrication. If you do the manual lubrication, the chain needs to be clean. You have to clean it regularly. Kind of goes without saying, but especially when it comes to the chain oiler, if you have dirt or dust building up on the motorcycle chain, those small drips of oil that are being put on the chain, they're not really starting to lubricate the chain. They're just sort of getting the, uh, the dirt or something to get that oily, but the oil is not getting where they're supposed to get. So if it's too dirty, that's gonna happen. That's especially the case when you start to ride your bike off-road in very dusty conditions. That happens really quickly in the chain. Uh, it's very dusty and none of the oil is really getting on the chain. Good thing is you probably are not riding that many kilometers, but you really have to make sure that you clean your chain at the end of the day, make sure that some oil gets on the chain. That's the one reason. The second reason is if the nozzle ever gets plugged up on a chain oiler and you don't see it on time, you really run the risk of uh, destroying your chain especially when you're used to a chain oiler working really well, which mine did for a very long time, you kind of get lazy and you know forget to start to look at the chain oiler and seeing if the oil is still making it onto the chain, which you should be doing, at least when every tank stop, checking out that the chain oiler is still doing its job. Now I had an incident where my chain oiler, and that was on the way back from France, I had this long France tour, 
that I did and it was the uh, the final day on the autobahn to get me back home again. It's a very relatively warm day, I think it was 30 degrees and up and I was riding a lot on the autobahn so I must have put at least 600 kilometers on that chain and for some, at some point the chain oiler, the nozzle got plugged up and I didn't see it on time which completely ruined the chain. Um, I want to show pictures of that, what it looks like. So it really, uh, I was in shock when I saw that. So I was at a gas stop and I was just pulling over, I think getting a snack and I came out and I saw the chain and it was literally disintegrating. So you see little sort of rust particles, the red rust particles accumulating on the inside of the rim uh, from uh, the rear rim. And you could see that the chain got really, really long too which is an indication that the chain runs really hot and then you know the chain as the uh, you know the front sprocket or the engine's pulling on it it's pulling the chain apart and it's making it longer so you can tell there was a lot of friction going on and a lot of heat and the chain got longer it was really kind of sagging and it looked really really sad i had another probably close to 200 kilometers to go on that day and i made it home i had to reduce the speed a little bit, take it easy. Of course, I oiled the chain and then immediately after that, I had to replace the chain. So that kind of stuff can happen. That also goes to show you that if you don't lubricate for long enough, you get to a point when there's no lubrication left and uh, it's easy to destroy your chain if you forget to loop your chain. So those two things uh, were a concern and those two things are actually things that I figured maybe a maintenance-free chain would take care of the issue. First, you don't have to lubricate at all, at least that is the marketing promise. You don't ever have to lubricate it. And with the way it's designed, I'm going to get into how it's designed and how it actually works. But it means there's no oil on it, means there is no dust or dirt sticking on it. And since you don't have to lubricate it, you're not dealing with a uh, plucked up nozzle. So it would also work really well in off-road conditions, which I was quite interested in. So that really got me interested and excited about this chain. Now, before we start to get into the experience that I have with the chain on the bike, now I've only put about 8,000 kilometers on this. So for those of you guys that follow the channel know that I've had a really bad bicycle accident and I didn't really do a whole lot of riding last year. If everything would have gotten according to plan, I would have easily put close to 20,000 kilometers on it by the end of last season. And now I'm ending up at uh, 8,000 kilometers. So it's not a final review of how well the chain works. I can just give you an intermediate chain, but I get to that in a minute. Let's talk about what makes this chain so special and how they actually achieve that. So if you look at a motorcycle chain, and we'll put up a, an image there, it looks like a any regular chain. So there's nothing, the chain you, or the sprockets that you need, it's all the same parts that you need. The chain looks exactly like any other chain that you would have. The two things they looked at were the bushings and the rollers and they are coated with a very very hard low friction material so the material is called uh, it's, it's a hydrogen free tetrahedral amorphic carbon uh, that's a mouthful to say but it's a, supposed to be like a diamond like carbon coating so it's it's very very hard and it has very low friction yeah and when you look at what lubrication is doing primarily for motorcycle chains is lubricating the area between the bushings and the rollers making sure that that stays lubricated and that controls the heat of the chain obviously if there's no friction there's no heat buildup that means chain will not expand and get longer that means you don't have to adjust it as often i mean there's some probably that you have to check every once in a while but overall it doesn't get as warm you know that keeps the maintenance free on the retentioning of the chain as long as that super hard coating lasts on the rollers and the bushings you don't have to lubricate it, which is really, really cool. Now, as for the experience that I had with my motorcycle chain, the eight, just over 8,000 kilometers I put on it, um, I put the chain on right in the beginning. I picked up this motorcycle, and the first thing I did is I put this chain on, and I wanted to see it, and I've given it no uh, TLC at all. It hasn't seen any lubrication. I do clean it every once in a while, so I keep the chain clean. Also, when I put it out of the packaging I made sure I washed up all the wax it's sort of in this wax um, material it took a while I took it into sink actually and scrubbed all the wax off the whatever lubrication that was on there I made sure it was all clean uh, it hurt a little bit to take a brand new motorcycle chain off a brand new motorcycle and just toss it in the trash and put this one on but you know I figured it's a good time to do it and of course I didn't have to replace the sprockets and uh, if I hadn't replaced the rear sprocket, which I only did for cosmetic reasons, I kind of like the uh, Super Sprocks orange sprocket, I like the design of it. I had it on my old bike, so I figured if I look at the chain, I might as well change the rear sprocket out, but it was not necessary to do it. So without the sprocket chains, I probably could have even left the tire on there. It would have been really easy to change the chain out. 
but I put the rear uh, wheel out, changed the sprocket, put the new chain on, and then since uh, the past 8,000 kilometers, I haven't given it any lug, uh, no lubrication at all. It probably makes sense if you uh, put this on there that, you know, at least for corrosion protection, put a thin layer of oil on it, it won't hurt it. But, you know, this is supposed to be a test to see how long it lasts without getting any care. So that's what I'm doing until it fails. Now, throughout the time that I had the chain on there, what I would do is I would sort of visually inspect the chain to kind of see if there's something you see. There isn't really much to see, to be honest. But also I would test how warm the chain is. Just uh, touching the chain and now, you know, if you have a chain that is not oil, it's going to get really warm. That's why it extends. So it was never warmer than hand warm, even after a long trip. The longest ride I had was the Balkan tour in October, so there was a lot of riding in the rain especially, and then back in the dry without re-lubrication, and I would touch the chain every once in a while to see how warm it got. It never got beyond hand warm, which is a very good sign, and a good sign that the coating that they're using really works. Now after 8,000 kilometers, it's pretty early to tell if it would go up to a normal lifespan of a chain, which, you know, I don't know what the right number is, but somewhere between 20 and 30,000 kilometers is something that I would expect to get closer to the 30,000, to be honest. That's what I would expect out of the chain. So there's still a little ways to go. Hopefully by the end of 2022 season, I will have an idea of what happens. And it'll be interesting to see how it starts to fail. The coating is just going to come off and it's going to start to get really warm. Not quite sure what that's going to look like. The one thing I got a little concerned about in the beginning is the chain glider. Now the chain glider is also the very first part that sort of wore out the fastest on my old 1290 Super Adventure S. The chain glider sits on the rear swing arm and protects the chain hitting the rear swing arm. It's just a plastic piece and I figured if there's no lubrication on it that it would wear out the uh, chain guard and it did for initially it just kind of you know wore it off quite a bit in the beginning but then it just kind of stayed steady to where it was so at the moment I'm not really concerned about it but it's something I have an eye on at the moment. Now if we're looking at the cost and benefit side of it of course it is going to cost you more than using a regular chain and just a chain loop that you have to get so when you make this change you do this for convenience reasons or yeah, especially for convenience reasons and cosmetic reasons because you know you can avoid having all that oil spray on your rear rim if, if you don't want to clean it all up that's the main benefit you get out of it it's just hassle-free maintenance free that's what you pay the money for so if you compare it to chain oiler that's going to run you between 300 and 350 euros uh, to put the chain oil in and the time it's going to take you about half a day it took me half a day to install the chain oiler and then you compare that to the regina a high performance endurance chain the price difference of the chain to a normal chain was in my case around 160 euros so a normal chains around 100 euros a did chain or whatever 100 euros this one was 260 something euros so about 160 euros price difference but for that it's relatively easy to install same way as a chain and you're done so if you look at it just from a cost perspective you know if you keep a bike for very very long that chain oiler is somewhat going to be the cheaper way of you know maintaining your chain on the go um, but of course, you paid 160 euro for having an oil-free um, primary drive, which is awesome. You don't have that oil spraying away. You don't have to bring a lubrication chain. So that was that was pretty cool. So the Regina high-performance endurance chain is probably the most expensive option out of those three when you look at it. But it's really hard to beat um, for the performance and the convenience that they're going to get. You don't have to refill anything. You don't have to install anything on the bike. You save the time of doing it and while you run it, it's really, really cool. If it really lasts as long as they promise it to be. So the jury is still on that one. But if it does what it is supposed to do, that's going to be what I'm gonna keep putting on my bike because at the moment I absolutely love it that I don't have to care about the primary drive of the motorcycle. So as for the outlook on this, I'm gonna be very curious to see what it looks like when the chain really breaks down. I would assume that that coating at some point with all that friction going on, it's going to come off any kind of coating is going to wear off and that's probably the part where the chain dies or other parts like the sprockets or the chain glider they also wear so it doesn't really make sense to have a chain on there that maybe runs 60,000 kilometers if your sprockets were earlier than this in the, in the chain glider so if it, if it gets to 30,000 kilometers I'd be happy to change it all out and put a new set of chains and sprockets on there but I'd be curious to see what happens if it gets warmer or if it yeah if you have to retention it a bit more often to see what it looks like when the chain really wears off 
Now either I do another video to see how it actually turns out towards the end of the year or I'm just gonna leave uh, sort of my my impressions in the comment section or the description section of the video so you can come back to see how it's been so far. There's been very little reviews on that so you can check out how it went for me if you're interested in anyway guys if you have questions or comments uh, please put them in the comment section i'll be very curious to see if you have uh, this particular chain on your motorcycle what your experiences have been especially after i've put on a few kilometers to see if you liked it or if you didn't like it so put that in the discussion i'm curious to see and i'll be reading those comments and responding to it guys thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next video until then ride safe and stay awesome